Welcome to yet another best of 5 in the round of 16 of the Wisdom of Thought tournament here with MetaPlace. $1,000 will be on the line when these guys get to the top 4. With the first place taking home $400, then $300, 200 100 is how the split goes between the first 4 players. In the blue color we have got Shadowfax playing S4. And his opponent in the red color. Neither of these guys really needs an introduction. This is Soup. Both top, top players from a long, long time ago. Especially Soup used to be one of those top Egyptian players. Now he's back with a vengeance and going for Norse. To many people's pleasant surprise. He's here to get real good for Retold. Where he wants to... Kick some ass and chew bubblegum. Shadowfax has been a top vanilla player for the longest time as well. And yeah, the form mirror. I'm not really sure which guy it will favor between these two. But they're both really solid Norse players. And form mirrors usually just come down to whoever <laughs> rates the best. It's a pretty intense matchup. I want to quickly thank our website subscribers who make these kind of tournaments possible. You all are the best. Make sure to collect your perks if you haven't already. I'm sure some of you have some perks that you haven't yet. I'm sure there's a use for them. They are pretty good. Stuff like covering your games on YouTube and whatnot. Getting your, your Twitch VIPs, etc, etc. If you guys want to become a YouTube, uh, website subscriber to directly help our project out, you can check it via our Twitch About section or YouTube descriptions. And as for this game, lots of hunt all over the place. Really suitable for a Norse mirror where, especially a 4 mirror, I really like the 4 pick on this map actually guys, because you get pick sticker, you stick these elephants real good with Basically a one-shot projectile from your villagers. It's it's good stuff, man Not much else to do that to though. There's no rhinos this time around not that I can see at least Should be a Freya mirror for both sides and we should probably get out that interface We could also have used the fog of war this whole time and I've just forgot that But this is a replay the guys have already played their games we Gave the players a lot of freedom in this tournament, which I'm not sure if it was too much freedom, maybe. Uh, because it, it takes a long time to gather up everything and we're not usually not able to just cover the games because very often the players will just go like, Oh, let's play in 30 minutes. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm at work. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. Having to do them in batches like today. Um, we got the Relic, the Shingles of Steel. More house hit points. We got the Angkor Fra, more favor. It's a free trickle per second. Um, okay. Freya for both players. It's gonna be relatively raiding calf heavy, I'm sure, with a little bit of throwing axemen in there. Maybe a little bit of Osark in there wouldn't be a shocker, but it's easy enough to counter that with throwing axes. Two raider two Hersiers versus two Hersiers. That's a pretty even matchup right there. The kitchen knives can always help out. Free Hersir now. With the proxy temple, Soup is hoping to get some damage done. He's also going to build up nearby with the longhouses. This could be a really quick game. These When the longhouses are so closely together, whoever has an advantage is usually going to get ahead very quickly. Gotta be careful with that Valkyrie. Gets two hits in with the Hersir. That's a pretty big deal. Now hunting the hyenas, nothing goes to waste if you're a Norse player. As the ox guards can just very easily follow around the villagers. If you're happening to come across some of those, then all good. <clears throat> it's a totally equal army, but the uh, Valkyrie is just more hurt. There's a little bit extra damage on the hearse here as well. So it's not something that Super really wants to take right now. He'll probably be wanting another longhouse once he can afford- Oh, there's the extra longhouse in the back, sorry. Of course he does. Sleep knows how to do a good build order. He's not gonna lack any resources for any of the standard stuff. Skrilling could probably go and join, but he's keeping it in the back because he doesn't want to make the houses on the front line. 
It's bad enough if you lose your longhouse, but if you start losing houses and longhouses and temple, that's that's not something you come back from, really, guys. So gotta be careful with this. This is the exact problem with building so far forward. You fall a tiny bit behind, and I even mean just health on your units, and it's suddenly a disaster. This Valkyrie needs just one more hit from a Hersier, and she's dead. Suddenly, it would be Shadowfax in population advantage. So she doesn't count. Of course, fire gonna be used by somebody. That was Shadowfax, just trying to keep soup at bay here. Destroying a longhouse reduces the production by a little bit, 50% at the moment. So that will need to be remade. And while it's being remade, this Valkyrie can just roll over this. Nah, not gonna happen. But she is distracting a good amount of units. Meanwhile, a few Vax are going through on the temple. That's gonna generate some favor for Shadowfax, which is great for later. Already has 25 favor here, as you guys can see. Buildings do award quite a lot. And Hersias generate double the favor. Oh, I wish he hit that Valkyrie. But it's easy for me to say. He doesn't have time to keep checking the health of every single unit. Uh, the health bar on top does disappear after a while. We've got soups fire as well now. Shadowfax just about gets away with his own Valkyrie. Must be careful with it. But it looks like the throwing axemen are doing some work. Some really good work, in fact. Taking down Hersiers, taking down Ulf Sarks. The Shadow Fact is now up 59, population to 49. But that might very quickly turn around depending on some of these units coming out and getting to hit these throwing axemen is also really good with those raiding cap. Oh, there's another Valkyrie for soup. I'd be surprised if there isn't one for for Shadow Facts. Yes, there is. As their economies are essentially perfectly mirrored with 24 villagers. There's gonna be no differences there. All the timing should be the same. Including for affording the Valkyrie, which stays alive here for soup, but more stuff is around for Shadow Facts, and his Valkyrie is full health. He can't. Soup can't take this fight right now. Almost enough advantage for Shadow Facts overall that I think he might be able to take the temple long term. Well, the soup's pumping out those raiding cabs like there's no tomorrow, which is looking pretty good. Oh, Shadow Facts's distance for drop offs is actually huge there. Could be an issue. Meanwhile, the back reese will be heating everyone back up to full. And there's another longhouse coming in for Shadow Facts. Another Adorman armory as well. And already starting to think about the next house that he needs, which is great. That means that Shadow Facts will be. Uh, no, nah, they're even on longhouses. They're doing it at the exact same time. So I'm really surprised that Soup is able to pump out a bigger army now with two Valkyries. If these Valkyries heal each other, that's going to be busted, man. Probably not going to be able to house Shadow Facts here as he's already building the next one, but a nice pickoff nonetheless. Valkyrie's now an auto queue for both players. Shadow Facts starts. Oh my god, that's a good raid. That's a good raid right there. My goodness. Villagers will be taken down easy peasy, so they have to run away. That's one kill and quite a bit of nuisance. <laughs> Still, Soup now has a. Bigger looking army. I'm not sure what is going on exactly with the numbers. Why does he have so much more population? What is going on? Well, Shadowfax's raiding calf have started wrapping around those throwing axes and they're absolutely wrecking them. In the main fight, it looks like Shadowfax has three Valkyries now to one, which is the biggest issue for Soup for sure. But it seems like Soup is ahead in the raiding cab numbers, so that's good for him. There are also medium raiders versus just normal raiders from Shadowfax. He's not getting medium cavalry. Soup might actually eke out a little win in this skirmish. But if the... I must say, if the Valkyries just keep going for Shadowfax like this, the medium cavalry won't mean anything. Oh! 
picks off the last Valkyrie, dude. That is brutal. Another Raider going down, too. That's a good amount of Raiders still, but they're going up against three Valkyries. Have to respect the Valkyries. Four now. Uh, the food just keeps going. What about the gold situation here? The dwarves are on top of it. They are not upgraded with pickaxe, which is unfortunate, but neither is that of soup. They just can't afford Well, soup could have afforded it, I guess. These guys are just gonna run away. But there's more. Valkyries find the villas, and that's gonna be another pickoff there. Giving Shadow Fax a two villager lead. And oh my god, does this man have food? He's eating an elephant, so no wonder. That's perfect drop off distances and everything. Russia goes down once again. Can Soup defeat four Valkyries? I think not. I think not. That is too much. These ladies are rather healthy and tanky. He can do this all day. If one of them might get surrounded there. That is a nice pick. Don't think the Hersher is possible to kill with just a handful of throwing axes that there are here. One Valkyrie goes down, but three more remain. Soup is trying to get his absolute best wraparound with these raiding cavalry. They're medium still over the normal unupgraded raiders. Shadow facts, but it does look like Soup is starting to... Get the wrap rounds that he needed. Shadow Fax starting to fall behind in population 73 to 61. And I think this is Soup's moment. He can strike now. If he can take down the houses, if he can take down the long houses, Shadow Fax will have no way back into this game. Um, maybe he's looking to get to the heroic age. His gold mine just expired. That is not going to happen then. Uh, he's shifted over his gatherers onto, onto gold, which is really not ideal. Currently idling. Copper Mail is getting researched, but he still doesn't have medium raiders, which is really the bottleneck for his power level right now. All the houses will be destroyed. That needs to be rebuilt. Gonna tie down the entirety of the infantry. And Soup is cackling, as this is exactly where he wanted to have Shadow Facts. On the defense. Both players upgrading medium mail. Uh, sorry, Copper Mail. Packs completely without houses, man. He can't make units. The counterattack is decent, but the kitchen knives, which is what the dwarfs also have. Valkyrie, a lot more resistant to it than everybody else. But still, it's going to be enough to defend this location. Soup doesn't have a whole lot of gold right now, but he has got a massive army, so he doesn't care too much. He destroyed all the houses. He's going for the long houses now. And Shadowfax is stuck at, uh, stuck at 55 population. He's working very hard on getting out some extra houses. But I don't think there's a way to come back for him right this second. Soup has just done too much damage. He's ahead by way too much as well. And this isn't Loki where you can get some random Mythian spawns to help you out and save the day. No, no, no. Soup is going to look for a way to finish the game. Potentially by gold starving and he's jumping exactly to the right location So moments from now he'll be there should separate these throwing axes because they're slowing him down right now getting pickaxe is a good idea He's got plenty of villagers here Aurora Borealis oh, it's <laughs> If the raiders stuck around, they would have cancelled Aurora Borealis. Man, that would have been something. But now these... Now these Shield Maiden Valkyries suddenly have 18 DPS. That's a pretty big increase. Uh, I don't think... Healing is the other effect. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're completely surrounded by raiding calves, so it doesn't matter in the end. Plenty of throwing axes for any infantry as well. Soup wins. Up 1-0 now in this best of 5. Pretty good start for him. Getting overall 82 kills to 69. Nice.
And while he was down in villagers, the military victory is real. Welcome to Mediterranean for game two. Shadowfax is going to be playing as the Blue Zeus. A really ideal pick for this kind of map. I think Shadowfax is our man to execute this properly too. On the other side, in the red color, we have got Kronos, played by Soup. Yeah, Kronos is probably one of those gods that is best right after the Greek ones. If played at the highest level, in my opinion, this is just an opinion and the players might be proving me wrong, but there's been a massive uptick of Kronos played on Mediterranean lately. And, well, it's really between Greek and Kronos, right? There's not much else that you will get to see there. Deconstruct used on the early dock. Always a good move because it stops the production of fishing ships. It makes sure that the fishing ships have to drop off resources as well. Stopping their gathering for a second. It's the most valuable use of deconstruction in the early game. I mean, there's not going to be anything other than a dock, really, to deconstruct for a long time. You could get the temple later, but the value of potentially denying a minotaur is not that high. You'll be able to defensively deal with that anyway. What I do wonder, though, is is there going to be... Some kind of time shift where Soup goes across the map with his temple and starts going on the offensive with his oracles. Get focus maybe as an upgrade to improve his oracle heroes even more. This guy is kind of hurt already, so maybe it's not the way to go. Then he can just save Valor for later. Um, two docks have been created by Shadow Facts. They're very near each other, making sure that he can fend off the waves and waves of by reams that are going to come in the classical age that's pretty important stuff temples now coming up for both players presumably soup is ready to go with the temple as well so we should be seeing it momentarily hunting on the Arox is always great but the piggies aren't too bad themselves because for a greek player to get this Arox lured into the TC range is, is a gamble. The pigs are guaranteed and they are very short drop-off distance, especially if you spread them out this nicely, as Shadowfax has done. Is he gonna go up to more than six ships? It looks like yes. He's got seven, eight. Maybe he'll pump out number nine. Maybe he'll get another dock just to absolutely make sure that he's got the firepower he needs to protect himself. But that's a lot of wood cost, so maybe he won't do it. Dropping off the resources is obviously very necessary to get to the next stage. Coming in with the ships as well. Uh, I think if he force dropped everything, it would have been enough. But there it is. Athena. Hermes? Hermes? Not Athena. Interesting. So, the strat here is that you just click ceasefire basically as soon as you're threatened on the water, which is going to be fairly soon. Uh, the Prometheus ad advance is actually not that much faster now than the Hermes one, so both players getting a little bit of a late advance. But basically the buy re number will very quickly rise here, and I really like the free docks. It's going to allow Shadow Facts to be relatively chill about this. And with the ceasefire, he can produce an ungodly amount of ships while he's on the defense, the Greek ships get real crazy as they reach the high population numbers. And we've got exactly what I said, the oracles as well as focus coming in. We should be seeing momentarily. Oh, oh, oh that's... What happened here? Why are all the oracles hurt, man? Bolt is gonna be used and just a little bit of pullback macro will save the villagers. Uh, Jason gets made, a centaur has been made. Uh, that free from Hermes, of course. I'm sure the gold mining is a little bit upset by this, but no worries, Shadow Facts already making triremes. The biorene production is also on. Bear in mind that almost nothing was spent here by our Kronos player. It's just a god power and a free myth unit. 
all he did was upgrade himself. And I guess he made an Oracle. Villager is relatively healthy. Jason can deal with this. Oh, the two HP Promethean will escape. That's nice. But this is already going across the map and the kitchen knives are doing what they must do. Five by reams versus four triremes. I like the chances of the triremes here, but there's a lot more by reams coming. It might make sense in this scenario to just cease fire this. But maybe you allow it to go a little bit closer to full population. That's probably the best way to do it, because that's when the triremes really start shining. There's currently five of them. I'm super just happy to build up as well. Certainly got the numbers with 10 here. And Shadow Facts will just calmly rely on his fishing ships. Later on, when he has some resources, he can pump out just a bunch of Pegasus to draw the fire off the Byremes. It's actually really annoying to deal with. I doubt he's actually going to get the upgrade where it's only costing favor for him. He probably just used the food from the water, that's fine. Uh, but some Pegasus up above the, the waters is usually pretty much worth it. Odysseus will try to find the gold miners, as this is a very easy spot to hang out and just uh, be an absolute annoyance. Soup will have to make something on land to deal with this, and this hero is not exactly weak. He's got 350 health. The ship battle begins again. Deconstruct is getting used on the dock. And Shadowfax has enough ships, I would say, to more or less fight this. Especially with the additional ones ejected now. Soup. Overstaying his Valka maybe a little bit. Might lose the citizen back here. As the two heroes are going to town on this. And the centaur has arrived as well. Hurting the citizen. Oh, the teleport into the tower just about works out there. Center will be joining under the tower as well. And we're not yet seeing another dock being made for Shadowfax. He's happy with the two he's got for the moment. Even though he got the wood back. All it means is that that went to ships. He's got a little bit too much gold right this second. So if we check out his perspective. You can see he's got 13 on wood and 12 on gold. Uh, that is not ideal. What you really want is to set up a little bit over a 2 to 1 ratio between your wood and gold because you have that as a cost for your your ships they're two to one right 150 uh, for each resources respectively and then you have to make houses then you have to make new storehouses so you need a little bit of extra wood that's that's fine seems the dogs together with the ships are more or less holding their own but i think this is now over and it's probably beneficial for shadow facts to Click the button, where there's peace for a minute. But I guess at the same time, he's enjoying the fact that he's absolutely bullying these villagers. <gasps> Whew, he almost got the kill there. He was looking, but soup quick to the chase and getting that garrison off between animations. Man. Kind of fortunate. Will he also pay attention to the other villager? Yes. He saves it in the last possible second. Soup's running out. Of gold, but he's going to the next gold mine. Sorting his situation out there. Very nicely done. Still got 11 by reams. Why didn't he transport the tower? Because it's expensive. It's the same cost as a tower. 200 and 100. So, easier said than done. You could buy two ships for that, man. Which soup is more interested in, in that right now, it seems. Transferring additional villagers to the gold. As well as here. He needs to make up for that. Doesn't need a whole lot of people on wood right now. The Odysseus is still running around and trying to find damage. But Shadowfax has been able to get a bunch of triremes going. It's not quite enough to threaten soup completely just yet. But it's an even number. So Soup will have to rely a little bit on his own dogs and their defensive abilities. It, it's something, right? But he's also housed or mannered. If Soup doesn't resolve this situation soon, he's going to be destroyed on the water. 
Shadow Fact showing absolutely no mercy against a man who's stuck at 70 out of 75 population. Not much the buy reams can do to out micro this. this. If you're in an even situation, then pull back micro and the lack of attention from your opponent is the only hope. And in fact, it's the opposite. <laughs> Shadow Facts is the one pull back microing and soup not paying attention. So all his buy reams get pulled into this meat grinder. The ships are sinking, dude. This is brutal. He's still not made the manor and. While he's got the resources to advance to the Heroic Age, he doesn't have anything else. Shadow Fax is getting ready for a land transition. He's probably looking to bully the gold mine locations. There's two key gold mines that Soup will be opting for. So Shadow Fax can take care of both, cancel ship production, which he did, get per scene, get talent centers, and start pressuring gold. That is exactly what he needs to do. His heroes are still going, so if he can just figure out where the golds are. Let's check his perspective again. Wrong person. Um, yeah, Shadowfax knows off the gold mines. He also knows that he's denied a lot of mining here, so... He should suspect that much more is going on. But of course, you're busy with the water micro, that's fine. A lot of APM required for Mediterranean, obviously. There's these four things happening at the same time. Uh, you have to keep an eye on your production, you have to harass with your heroes, you have to micro your ships. You have to make your houses. It's a lot to do. Arox takes out the villager. Hmm. Now Soup has a bunch of fishing ships left, but not for long, not like this. Once down. Valor's getting used. I don't think that hit a single citizen, however. Oh, it did hit this one. We're good. These citizens are pretty high health, so this is won't be able to bully them too hard. And now we've got Heroic Age through Hyperion for our Kronos player as well. So these military bar barracks, I assume, will be producing Arcus very soon. Which is great for Shadow Facts. He's making Hippicons. Is he doing anything about the other gold mine? Doesn't look like it, but he's getting plenty of gold himself. He's got a thousand wood in the bank. Man, time to time to TC up. Time to make a ton of fishing ships as well. He's only got eleven. That could be a much nicer, bigger number. But this is was hyper valuable this game. He'll be back. Well what Soup is doing here is a bit of a wet noodle thing. He's not hitting very hard at all. Barely keeping the Greek army at bay, really just slowing it down. And there's a lot more Hippicons coming and those are gonna hit back hard. These Arcus will never know what hit them. There's no palace here either. Soup has a thousand gold in the bank, but no wood. Definitely would be nice to see him spreading the villagers out a little bit. One of them going to the deers, one of them going to the trees. Shadowfax finally grabbing the back TC, maybe soon considering the front TC as well. There's not much going on on the water. Soup's trying to make some siege ships, but remember, these can be dodged by the Triremes. Although Shadow Facts is not really microing it. If that's not happening, the siege ships will absolutely destroy the Triremes, so something to keep in mind. Then again, Shadow Facts is fairly close now to the Heroic Age himself, and he's killing a respectable amount of the siege ships. On a 1 to 1, it's a hard counter. 5 to 2 is a lot more doable. Anyways, the Arcus are now getting on top. Oh, the Satyr actually did a lot of damage to the villagers, and there's nothing here. So Shadowfax is just gonna pull the plug on all that. 
and uh, he, he's happy to continue where he where he left off, just gathering resources, grabbing a TC, and securing this location with that. Wonder if Soup's just gonna grab a TC and be happy with that, or if he wants to jump Mythic maybe and get an implode going. Looks like just a TC. Man has free siege by reams. They're not very expensive. So you can definitely keep pumping those. And eventually he can go for the the docks themselves. Third TC as well from Soup. He really wants to catch up. 14 seconds left. That's enough time to finish this TC just about. Maybe not quite. He would need like six wheels. And I don't think they started immediately as ceasefire started. So now I have to deal with those. And Shadowfax still doesn't have the resources to actually advance to the next stage. Has to get a little bit of land economy going for food. Well, he's making the armory. He's full pop almost. So what he could do from here is just hunt a little. Transfer some goldies. Oh, we've got a temple getting put forward. Military barracks as well. Villagers can't quite handle that, so Shadowfax is forced to build some units from that location. Arcus are high enough in number that the hoplites don't work. I really don't like this movement here. Should have just stuck around here or gone here. Siege by Reams now in high numbers. We'll be deleting the Tri-Reams, no problem. Soup might have a bit of a comeback, but he doesn't have fishing ships. What is he really fighting for, you might wonder. And you'd be right to wonder. Not much there. Has to remake some fishing ships, he certainly has the wood for it. And he is. Satyr, definitely a huge issue here. Apollo is coming in, there's a watchtower for Shadowfax, but what he really needs is heroes. Where are his heroes? There's a Jason here. Not much else. The Arcus are an issue. Meanwhile, the Hippicon are just getting eaten up by those Mermillo, man. Dogs can shoot back pretty good at the Byreams, by the way. They have a big negative multiplier of minus 50% versus buildings. Not terribly effective. They are only really there to take down ships. Sure, they'll be able to destroy the docks, but they're not that much better at it than arrow ships, to be honest, especially for the extra population costs. Of 3 to 2. Mass Arcus, man. Mass Arcus. I'm gonna do a number to these villagers. Have to be really careful. They're also heavy Arcus now. Shadowfax has to respect this. Losing a lot of villagers. He's down to 54 villagers now. Can Soup potentially win this? I think he might have it. He we might have a comeback from our Kronos player, man. Although Greek Heroic Cage is in. And I'm sure the Manticore will create problems here for the Arcus, but so many villagers are dying. Shadowfax is not able to remake them at this speed. Tons of Arcus have gone down, but they also took so many vills with them, it's okay. Soup is maxed out on villagers and has a bunch of fishing ships on top. Just picking off a handful of units here and there is good enough for him, especially if it's villagers. And the Paltas will take care of the Arcus finally. But it's a lengthy process and there's still Mermillos going after the vills, oh my god. My Reem's finally taking down one dock. Takes a long time. And cursed. Or chaos. 
applied. And Manticore's converted Shadow Fax has to tap out of this one. Soup equalizing the series with a 1 to 1 so far. Pretty good stuff. The man's making a comeback happen here. Did not expect that after how hard he lost the water, but he had enough on land, I guess, to recover from it. Very nicely done. Okay, we've got Anatolia. Shadowfax is going to be running Isis on this one. Makes a lot of sense. It's really the perfect map for Isis if you consider everything. Loki from Soup is a little bit untraditional. Gonna be super curious how he does this. Certainly there's enough food going around for Hersier raids on land. But what does he do about the water? If, if Isis gets out of control there, then... Should be absolutely no problem to match whatever needs to be done on land. Now, the first dock is extremely securely placed in the back. I I like this for Isis a lot. Uh, Ancestor's Eclipse doesn't play as huge a role as it does in some other matchups because we're gonna basically see a lot of hers here. So it needs to be supported by something and ideally needs to hit the economy right when right when Soup isn't ready to defend it. The Hurstiffs are out there doing stuff, so Soup always needs to remember that and keep some stuff home. Or, another thing that you can do is to just let everything happen that Loki wants to do, get gather up their Hurstiffs for a flaming weapons attack, and then you counter that somewhat with a with an Ancestor's Eclipse. The Hurstiffs will have to fight the minions rather than your actual army, and meanwhile your actual army does a number to the Hurstiff. So the bottom side will be occupied rather quickly by both sides. And then the Osarks are already looking for the place. At the top, there's nothing spotted, but Soup just gets impatient and slaps it down anyway. Usually you could go all the way to the middle, because there's nothing there to stop you. And Shadowfax is actually currently out of gold, because he's really heavily committing on this bottom side. We'll see which strategy pays off better. But it really should just be a, a fast heroic for, for uh, Isis. With a little bit of ship action in there, of course. You have to protect your water. We're a little bit stopped on ship production, it seems. Oh, there's more. Oh, right. Shadow facts. Mostly plays with that auto queue. Did you guys know that? It's a little fun factoid. Good amount of dwarves being committed to the gold, making sure that soup can advance a little bit faster to the classical age. While still getting all these docks up. <laughs> it's gonna have a good amount of excess gold, however. Shadowfax also starting on his temple. And soup moving on to trees. Getting out one last dwarf, and then he should be able to go classical. Same with Shadowfax. Almost there. I'm, I'm sure that he'll stop gathering from chickens and stuff. A new Anubis? What? Are we classical fighting this? Well, that's incredible. I did not expect that. I guess he's gonna use sea snakes. Huh. Fascinating. I can't say I've seen this much done on Anatolia. Maybe once or twice. So I also can't claim I remember the outcome. What do you guys think about this matchup in the chat? 
classical fight. Huh. Shouldn't it be the case that Hersier just shut down an an Anubites? They're so fast, man. Anubis to control the water, yeah, like I said, the sea snakes. Do create a little bit of a brick wall that you have to clean up before you go through it. First scene coming in for a Loki player real quick. Before any longboats. But cabinets are already on the way for Shadowfax. Hmm, here's the first Anubite. Let's see what it can do. Chat's saying that AE is still good. That's answers this Eclipse for. Newbies. I do think that despite the high Hersher counts that we'll see, you'll always find a spot that's not protected enough and at least cost some idle time on the economy. This Anubite should not be bothering the Hersher, that's for sure. It's gonna get hit and each slap hurts a lot. The Kebanids have bonus damage against fishing ships, so... If Shadowfax can poke in and get some free damage in, it's a good time to do so. Soup seems to just be more interested in a fast heroic here. Doesn't have a armory, as far as I can see. Nope, no armory. Kimo goes. Anubis against Kronos on water. Interesting. Is that an Anatolia thing? Or do you guys see it like elsewhere too? Let's say, do you see it on Midgard? You'd figure that's such a good map for Ancestors Eclipse though. And like you get that Leviathan out on the water and then you eclipse that thing. It's an absolute Giga Chonker. And it gets fast, then it gets strong, then it's get, getting that crazy armor from Eclipse. And you get that extra favor as well from the Eclipse effect. I'm not sure if snakes are that good. And it's not like additional Anubites are being made or units for that matter. It's just a two Axemen. So Shadowfax probably looking for a faster heroic as well. As for Soup, he never made that armor. He's extremely late on it. So what he can compensate with here is just making additional Hersiers to... Cabinets are kind of controlling the water here. On the other side, there's not much fighting because there's just one cabinet. And that's where soup committed heavier. So you can chase that down eventually. You can only go so far, right? And that's a favorable fight for him right there. Considering that the longboats are way stronger. Wait, wait, wait. Kimo goes Anubis on Medit. Oh, you mean in ranked. He never picks Egyptian on water, man. Uh, sorry, on, on Medit. <laughs> I was gonna say. But if you place in ranked, then yeah, of course. You have to do what you can to protect yourself there. And these snacks are actually doing some pretty good work nibbling away at the longboats. Bragi is well on the way at 40 plus percent. Nefty set just started, 10. Longboats will be taken down by the superior cabinet count. This is a pretty good move for Shadowfax overall. Retreating through the snacks now. If Soup's not looking, he's gonna get bitten to pieces. Ships get taken down. We've got, however, Heroic Age, and that's a good amount of Hersier. Like, usually people hit with like 13 Hersier or so. But you could have rushed Flaming Weapons, obviously. Get these guys on the other side of the map. I do think you want Hall of Fanes for this one. Uh, and right now, Soup is a little bit house. He's missing one house, to be exact. 
TC will come up for Shadow Facts, or at least he's trying. A bu bunch of Axemen. Better keep those going, buddy. You're gonna need it. What is actually this strategy gonna be? Is Soup looking to max out on like three TCs and do mega flaming weapons? It could probably be the thing to do here. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> 15 cabinets? Dude, get out. No way. Okay, where is the chonker? Down here, Leviathan. Not joining the fight just yet. What is this? Well, no wonder our boy is full population. He's got an extra TC now, so he's good. But what was that? Is this really necessary? <laughs> Chat? I assume you mean no. Scorpion laws with the biddies. Send him to Shadowfax, man. He, he just spent his entire life savings on these cabinets. <laughs> Thanks for the support, buddy. Is Soup gonna grab the back TC? Oh, doesn't look like it. He's getting Hall of Fanes. He's got a handful of Battle Bores. There it is, the wire for now taking down sea chips. Yeah, those, those sea chips are not gonna do anything. That is also access to ramming galleys. Not much to worry about. Medium Axemen ready to go. Migdol ready to go. Chariot archers ready to go. Framing weapons won't do much. Hell is coming in, however. Now, you get a bunch of fire giants out. It's a very different story about those Axemen. Suddenly, they're pretty much just gone. You gotta, let's say, four fire giants, that will be it. The man has 80 favor. He can certainly get it done. And look, it's climbing fast without much fighting happening anyhow. He's just got a handful of these... Oh my god! The Drakkar! They're getting ready to surround the Leviathan. It never had a chance. Getting bonked on the head. Evacuate the vessel! Mm. <laughs> I just love the sound it makes. <laughs> it's the best sound in the game. Alright, forward temple from soup. This must be for fire giants. He doesn't have a lot of gold banked up. But he should be able to instantly make two. He's got max favor, so just in time with everything. And Shadow Fact should be more than capable of defending his docks. I mean, they do pierce damage, the docks do. So these Drakkar are gonna get shot to pieces. Fairly easily too. And here it comes. Granite Blood is the first upgrade he gets. In the home TC, I assume. That's gonna give these fire giants plus 200 health. Not something to neglect, of course. And the water has been cleaned up. Pretty good stuff. Some fishing ships eyeing whatever they can. Uh, I think delete them is probably the next move for soup. Needs more army. Needs those fire giants to pop. If he just had that back TC up, he could have three more fire giants. No need for 45 TCs. Great. Blood's almost done. And they are now 800 health. Pretty good stuff. And the mod I'm using turns from gray as well. So you can tell when it's done. Well, I really like the warning attempts by Shadowfax. Oh my god, he's up Osiris. There's a Mig there's a Migdor shooting at the Nithog and the son of Osiris, so it's in a little bit of trouble here. Taking quite a bit of damage each time the Sound of Osiris, for whatever reason, targets something else. There's enough Axemen here to go around and 
casting the throwing uh sorry the, the minions on the throwing axeman make sure that these horses have to turn around to actually take care of things there's a frost giant which also is affected by granite blood so it turns teal and it also has the horns like the scotty one anyways a lot of the horses are already dead as i said the axemen are a pretty good answer to this we also have a mummy which probably won't be very long lived but it's trying its best okay where did the Nithog fly? Still alive at almost more than half the health. That's pretty good. Killed a bunch of villagers, but nothing too crazy. So, so far, so good. Here come the Ballista, however, and that's a really good answer to the Sound of Cyrus. We'll have to keep garrisoning that boy to keep him going because the Ballista will tear him a new one real quick. Uh, especially without shield up upgrades. See, we've got the health upgrade. City of the Dead. Which is going to make this boy a lot tankier. Oh, the chain light takes absolutely wrecked the ballista. The frost giant's toast, and the fire giant's gonna be next. The nithog is back to raid the villagers on the gold mine. And so far, so good with that. The other gold mine is a lot richer on villagers, so should go for that. The cavalry mercs are a great answer to slow ballista, especially before they get their draft horses upgrade, which is a long way away. It's an expensive thing. These guys only have 2.4 speed. Easy pickings. Easy pickings for the Merkav. You can't just kite away from that. If you get to the later stages of the game, if there's not mass walls everywhere, then uh, actually the Ballista can kind of auto kite a little bit. They have four minimum range and they can kind of protect each other thanks to that. But not before. That upgrade is done. The Nithog still has like 600 health. A lot of villagers were killed, but Shadowfax is very comfortable. He's got 22 fishing ships. That's more than enough to sustain his villager production from here on out. And this is what I mean. The Ballista kind of protect each other like this. So the Merkcalf have to be careful. They have to come in in numbers and each attack an individual Ballista. An optional thing you can do is use the chariots actually to take down the ballista. It doesn't sound very smart, but the ballista don't have much health. A bit of damage still comes through from the ballista, as you can see, from the uh, chariots. So it's not that bad to actually try to snipe them with chariots. They still have 20 range. They deal like two damage per shot. So you can reasonably take them down if the ballista number isn't completely stupid. Anyways. Looks like this is the last she wrote for the Nithog. It's getting lightning struck. Not a lot of villagers left for Shadowfax, but it's something that he can he can kind of live with for the moment. All the hill forts are down, all the ballista are down, and only fire giants really remain as a viable option for Soup here to save himself. The ballista are toast. And there's a siege tower on top of the TC. Not a great situation to be in for soup. The chariots are on top of his villagers. Man, they gotta pull out the kitchen knives. It's the only hope. Um, the chariots are in the wood line as well. Picking off the ox cart would be absolutely enormous. But you could, of course, also just pick off the villagers and uh, wait for them to retreat eventually, which will happen, I think. More and more siege towers are coming out. This one wasn't gonna do the trick. As there's now two fire giants that can protect this. But here the chariots have absolutely rampaged on, on the goldman area. Swinery is coming through for soup. He's fearing the elephants. And he wants that bonus damage for the Ulfsarks. Copper mail is good. Watchtower, I'm not sure plays a big role right this second. But that son of Osiris is doing an absolute number to the to the fire giants. He doesn't really have any Upgrades, they don't have funeral rites, him and the priest. It would affect the stun of Osiris too, by the way. And give him a lot of extra bonus damage against the fire giants. He already has a good amount, so it's not like it's gonna double his damage, but it's helpful. Siege Tower is always a fine garrisoning platform. And then Mummy can use his life to trade against a fire giant. Well, they will probably die on the way out. Still, everything of soups is gone. That's all that Shadowfax needed, and he's now uh, getting a point on the scoreboard. It's better than no points, that's for sure, and maybe he can get a reverse sweep pulled out. 
it's not gonna be easy, especially against Soup, but the man now has a chance. So, Marsh. There's always Norse players here, man. There's always Norse players here. And we are looking, in fact, at a Loki mirror between Shadowfax and Soup. Respectively in blue and red. Well, this could go cray cray. There's a lot of hunt. There's no way to avoid the Hersier spam. Whoever does the better Hersiering will get more Mifune spawns. Just gonna keep those boys alive. There's a, certainly a huge degree of randomness to it, so while the early game is going on, I might as well explain how it works. Each Hersier has their own hidden favor o meter. Okay? Once you reach the favor required to spawn a myth unit, which will happen on kill, you will be able to spawn that myth unit. This is... Uh, to keep in mind, also accounting for the favor cost reduction of Loki. And... That's minus 10%, so they're cheaper in that sense, and it's not using your actual actual resources. So it's not going to reduce your actual favor. But you have to keep in mind that the Hersiers actually gather at double speed. The penalty on or bounty on each unit for favor is uh, displayed in the UI here. If you have Ippert's UI like I do, you get favor for buildings, for units, for everything. But it's only awarded on kill for the low key units. That's when the spawns happen. So you have to watch out for that. That's when the spawns are awarded to you, when you kill something. And it's randomly selected. What myth unit you get is randomly selected uh, from the age that you're in as well as the ages prior. Archaic age, Hersius cannot spawn, but. Uh, once you reach classical, they can. And that's about it. I think I'm not forgetting anything. That's that's the rundown of how Loki spawning works. It can be any myth unit. It's like pre-selected. It's gonna stick with it. If something has been pre-selected in a prior age already, then that's happening. You cannot spawn beyond your population limit. Now that's all the rules. UI does not show how much favor the Hersier is on. I wish it did, Yoshi. I wish it did. That would be a request for retold. And to be honest, is the request for retold that the system should be a little bit more transparent and it's a global system so that you can know when to do it? And you could spawn it on top of one of your Hersiers? That would be nice. But I don't know. I kind of wish it was global and not individual per hearse here, because there's nobody keeping track of that. There's no player intent behind it, it's just, oh, I gotta keep my hearse here alive. The end. <laughs> and it just happens when it happens. Anyways, there's four relics. Very easy to collect, four Norse. They're making hearse here immediately. We got the Mithril Horseshoes for calf speed. We got the Ring of Nibelung for free gold. We got the Scarab Pendant for ram damage against buildings. And there's one more somewhere that I just... Oh, the Anchor Fra. Free favor. If we know everything, where is the magic? <laughs> Nobody knows everything. Still a hidden information game. You have to figure out what the other guy is doing. And they can hide stuff from you. But yeah, it's a little bit random, that's for sure. And you can get a troll versus a... A battle boar spawn. That's a pretty big difference there. <laughs> Whoever gets the better spawns sooner... Is usually in a pretty good spot. Yoshi says, hey Norse mates, let's start the track. Each Hersier's favor counts. <laughs> I do think there should be a UI for it, at the very minimum. Even if you guys disagree with my dislike of randomness, which is totally fine to disagree with it. Maybe you like 
the excitement factor that it brings of oh, anything could happen, right? At least it should be shown to the player what's happening, because it's so hard to understand. If someone called Ippert hadn't figured out the whole thing about how this works, then... which took a significant amount of experimentation, by the way. If he hadn't done that, people just still wouldn't know how the hell Perseus work. So I'm I'm just happy to share that with you all. It's a great YouTube video as well, I think, made on Protox's channel, which you can all check out. That's P-R-O-T-O-X, with two X's, I'm pretty sure. Where he explains the whole thing more eloquently than I can during a, a live cast. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll have to do one of my own when Weetle comes out, depending on how it works. Now, about this game, however, there's a good amount of throwing axemen here to defend and an equal number of hers here. So, Shadow Fax will have to get out of here. Hall of Fiends is coming in. It's going to be faster for Shadow Fax, so the getting out of here part will be fairly easy and soup breaks off knowing that there's no point chasing that. In fact, it's a ruse. The whole thing just happened to make this happen. Getting the villagers to idle and not hunt. Always oh, killing the animals. Absolute animal cruelty, dude. Spawns of Akri. He kept track of the individual favor of the hearse here. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I mean, they dealt a good amount of damage to all those villies. Mithra Horseshoe is definitely worth picking up. It's right there, man. You got raiding, Kev. Extra 10% speed is 0 0.6. Big number. More and more horses joining the fight. Soup's army is starting to look pretty good, but Shadow Faxes is just bigger. 90 out of 95 population right this second, and I'm assuming there's more and more houses coming in. Trying to find the fight those boar. Ah, the ton of arrows missed. Can't really find a good raiding target here. All the villagers are very well protected by Soup, so. What Shadow Facts can really do at this point is to just get a big fight going where he has better positioning than the other guy. Gets a wrap around as well. That's the hope. committal in this. Soup will be getting the faster heroic age at this rate. So Shadow Fax needs to make something happen. Once Soup gets heroic, his horse here will get an automatic buff from the heroic age advance and will significantly outperform those of Shadow Fax. So striking now is the way to go for sure. Get those numbers down and then you can handle whatever comes with the heroic age. Should get a great surround on that troll. Might result in a summon or two, especially if he kills those throwing axes. Oh, it's full population. He can't actually summon right now. So that's not happening. Needs to lose a hearse here or two, and then he'll get something. There's the Valkyrie summon already for soup. That's definitely the opposite way of what Shellfax had intended. Gold Star is brutal, could destroy the temple here as well and steal the relics. I would love that. Oh man. 
Soup might get his battle board denied. Oh, this is huge. Can he get it in time? Nah, he's gonna pull off. Oh man, he's gonna kick himself for this. If he just destroyed that temple, man, the battle board wouldn't have spawned. Although it might be free pickings if Soup runs it into the army, but that's not gonna happen. He's a, he's a really good player. The population disparity has been on purpose so that he gets these better Perseus out. Now look at these 169 hit points when they're at full health versus 156. So definitely a nice little increase there from Heroic Age. And he's got flaming weapons. Soup isn't that far away from actually maxing out. Once he does and he clicks flaming weapons against the army of Shadowfax, Shadowfax is actually in serious trouble. But he's going himself to the Heroic Age. So Soup needs to do something soon to get such an advantage. I think Soup actually might be waiting out for Shadowfax to do that as well. Being confident that... Oh god, no, 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 he's not doing that. He's not doing that. Shadowfax will be able to just run away from this. Maybe losing one hearse here there, which is totally acceptable by the way. And just getting a bigger flaming weapons together with his whole army. But right, he's got a population advantage. And Soup is going to regret having cast Flaming Weapons first, because now Shadowfax will just absolutely destroy his army, dude. There it is, Flaming Weapons, wrap around. Oh, Soup is in trouble. In serious, serious trouble. The Battle Boars won't be able to do much of anything to him anymore. Perseers have more speed, they'll run it down and destroy it. Uh, Shadowfax not able to spawn any Mythians, but man, is he gonna get Mythian spawns when he gets back into the battle and starts losing a few Hersiers. That is exactly why he's heading out and not healing up. Also because plenty of the Flaming Weapons time is still left, so he can get some Flaming Weapons versus nothing time. Very desirable for sure. Even jumping on those throwing Axemen is totally viable in this period of time because these guys have 17.6 DPS versus 4.5. Obviously, multipliers uh, against the Hersiers exist. Which I believe is a 2.5x. If I remember correctly, we could check. I'm not sure if it lists. Uh, 1.25. Oh, uh, sorry, 2.25 multipliers. I prefer multipliers to this percentile nonsense, by the way. Um, way easier to wrap my head around it. <laughs> but that was a great flaming weapons, and he could get on top of the villagers now. All that's left is for Shadowfax to lose a few units so that he can spawn myth units in for free. And that can really turn the tide. Now, Soup has a bunch of units out on the map. Battle Boars trying to bully Troll trying to bully the Battle Boar, but that's not happening. This Battle Boar has 60% Pierce Armor. And it's doing some crush damage and hack damage to the Troll. It's still going down though. The Troll has a little bit of lifesteal to it, as you can see. Oh my god. Two per shot. It's coming back. Kitchen Naps are gonna kill it. <laughs> the amount of spawns that Shadowfax is going to get in a moment is gonna be absolutely disgusting. There's one. Not nine here you are. That's gonna boost the entire army. And I'm not even sure that any further Hersius will die here. Soup just pulls back, uh, denying any opportunity for further spawns to Shadowfax. Well, my prediction, once again, is off. Cold Miners are next, and Soup might as well just tap out at this point, to be completely honest. Shadowfax is all over him. He's got spawns saved up for days. And even though Soup is putting up a reasonable resistance here, there's more for Shadowfax. If he just joins up, there's another. And here you are spawning, by the way. Armies uniting. Shadowfax going home. I think he's not aware of how many spawns he's saved up, man. There's, there's plenty more in there. Well, it's a good idea to keep your units alive. You get, it's like free resources, right? Nothing wrong with this. Maybe the man just wants to go mythic and put away soup in style. Oh my goodness, there's the troll. It's a good spawn right there. Battleboard should be able to make a mess of these throwing axes as well. 
it's pretty slow before you get to upgrade him. Getting the first size rune is always very valuable. But it's expensive and you'd rather go mythic, right? Wait, isn't it a wood cost thing? Let me check real quick. Ah, it is wood. So you can do it. In heroic, no, no less. If Shadow Facts can click hell now, that would be great. And he did. Another Aunt Harrier spawn. This is bonkers, man. In the last few fights, he got spawn after spawn after spawn. And that's because he kept these Hersiers alive for that, that long. Shadow Facts has plenty of population left, but... Probably his favorite meter is running a little low. There's a mountain giant coming in. So now I, I seriously doubt that he's got any anything left in the tank. Would seriously surprise me. Gotta wait for more kills anyway. And it doesn't look like they'll happen at this point. Then everything's fine. The game's still running. I've paused it. So let's get it on. Let's get it on. So continuing from here, there must have been a small cutoff, but should be no big deal, really. A mountain Giant will be adding a lot of damage against buildings here, but I think what the Hersiers are really looking for... This is what they want. This is a jackpot location. Hell is coming through. What a hell of a game, man. Shadow Factor is getting spawn after spawn soup. Not so much. And he's gonna have Nidhogg on top. Oh my god. Ah, he. we're not gonna see the juicy attacks. Ah, soup, please. Give us 10 more seconds of your time. Let us watch some villagers die. <laughs> Next time, please. It will be great. I promise. It's gonna be worth it. Okay. But that score is now 2-2. Two two, and we're having to go to a decider game. Absolutely bonkers, 83 to 53 kill to death ratio for Shadow Facts. I think that tells the entire story. He just gathered all that favor up, even though it was roughly the same number of hers here. He just had them staying alive for a longer time, and that's all that matters in this matchup. Game 5, the decider. Soup is gonna be playing in the blue color in this one. Don't get confused, it's Soup in the blue. It's playing as Loki. On the other side, we've got Shadowfax playing as Odin. So more Norse Mirror. These are extremely entertaining games to cast. Probably my favorite if I had to choose something. Seems good to me. And also, picking either of these on Tundra is a pretty good choice. There's a lot of hunt to go around, just like on Marsh. It's not really any different. Plenty of gold mines as well. Um, it's a little bit of a smaller and more aggressive and more open map, however. So the games should be a little more decisive than they are on Marsh. But then again, it was a Loki mirror, that one. So fairly decisive as it is. This one might be more of a... Uh, gets decided in the classical age or early heroic kind of thing rather than going all the way to mythic, but We shall see exactly how it goes. No spectator this time So I'm not able to use the spectator functions having to go from player perspectives to player perspectives No, it is what it is Let's keep on Loki for soup I would, generally speaking, favor Loki a little bit over Odin. Not by much, but just a little bit. The spawns can really do Odin dirty. But you got the better food gathering, so there is that. You can definitely compensate with that with your unit counts. If you can just pick off this hearse here with some nice throwing axemen and support from your raiding calf wrapping around them then great if not then they keep escaping you and they keep spawning myth units on you then well resting pepperonis especially if loki 
uh, get, gets healing on them all the time as well. Yikes. That's a yikes. All right, so let's see about what the age ups will be. It looks like Freya for Shadowfax. My goodness, I'm a little tired, as you guys might have figured by now. Uh, the stream has been going for well over eight and a half hours or whatever it was. We had a crash in the middle of that, so lost the track of time now, but it's been a long time. Double Temple Loki again. Just like Yoshi did earlier. Very interesting. Soup's doing it now. Wonder how that will work out. This is expensive. But it certainly gets those hers here out. There's no problem with that. And if you go for Seti, which he is doing, then you can make double trolls even once your favor count goes real high. And the main resource you still have is actually wood. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure that Shellofax will be enjoying a significant number of goats here later should he need to retreat to his main base. But meanwhile, we're gonna go out there and harvest some hell elk. The relics on this map are the Eye of Horus, definitely worth picking up if it goes to the later stages. Free TCs getting together a 6 population advantage, that's meaningful. We got the head of Orpheus for building line of sight, also nice to have against Loki for sure. We will be getting on top of you from all sorts of directions, so early warning for that is important to speed up your reactions. We're gonna kitchen knife against the hearse here, but they are gathering favor. They don't really care about losing a little bit of health. They'll just go back, chill around the healing spring, kill some of these animals to make them rot, as well as to get the favor bounty from them. That's a favor, an entire favor for killing one elk. It's ridiculous. I think the main reason it's that way is so that four players can kill just two elks or whatever, deer, anything like that, to uh, to get their their pixie grab upgrade. That's I think the only reason animals give this much favor. Yes, that doesn't sound right, sound right at all. 1.44 for the aurochs. That would round up to free favor for Hersiers if they kill them. Getting a long house would round up to nine favor. <laughs> oh, the long house block! Getting the hero kill there as well. The f the forest fire isn't gonna do anything. He's gonna pick up the relic. It's the eye of Horus, so that's a steal right there for soup. Fantastic work. Shadowfax must be fuming with anger right now. And all these horses can just go home later and heal if they want to. There's a healing spring to chill by. And that relic carrying boy will be very happy to do so as he's fairly low health right now. I don't actually think these guys really want to engage with the Osarks. They're kind of overwhelming in numbers. So maybe Soup should build up the numbers first. But the relic will help delaying houses a little bit. Gets a very lovely surround on that troll. Now Hersier is chasing it. Can't really escape. Tr troll is slower than the Hersier. We got the Iron Harrier blowing the horn and causing a mini flaming weapons in the middle of this. Shadowfax doing a good job isolating the units. There's more Hersier in the back here for Soup. He's gotten Hall of Fame's research, which is why he's got the. Low Hersier count, well, low, it's not that low. The, the, you have to keep in mind the Ulfsarks actually train a lot faster. They take 9 seconds to make, whereas these guys take 20. So the Hersier count will be lower if the resources are available for mass Ulfsark, which they are available. We're Odin, and we're hunting. That's all that needs to be said. 20% faster hunting for our Odin player, after all. Pretty meaningful. It's two hunting parties as well for our Loki, so... 
Sup certainly trying to compensate. He needs it for the double Hershey production. But even this is not quite enough because there's walking involved between the different spots. So you have to do a little bit of force drops and Shadowfax looking for the raid now. Can he make it happen against Soup here? A good raid or two could absolutely swing things in his favor. He's currently defending rather well, but the hearse here are in his wood line. Which is certainly a problem. Medium infantry is in, making his offsarks just a little bit more durable. Several pickoffs are coming through against the villagers. The kitchen knife's just not OP enough. Kills the hearse here as well. But the Mifian spawns can't be too far away now at this point. Tons of Hershey's are around. One of them gets picked off again. But Soup's pumping them out like there's no tomorrow. He's 59 population with the Shadow Fax is 76. And further Ulfsark pickoffs. Sorry, the Ulfsark's picking off more villagers than before as well. If these guys can separate and get back onto the Ox Guard, you have to remember Loki's Ox Guards are weak sauce. They are not nearly as potent and the Hershey's get another troll spawn after killing several of the caribou. Yeah. The Ovsarks might get caught in between a rock and a hard place here as the Hershey's are trying to chase them down. They're a little bit faster than the Ovsarks are but the Ovsarks are no slouchers themselves. That said, two of them are going to bite the dust there. And suddenly Shadowfax's population lead not looking so hot. Soup... Uh, sorry, Shadowfax has 86 pop versus... Shadowfax is... What? No. Shadowfax has 87. Soup has 76. There we go. God, I'm tired. House is getting picked off now. These will be giving you 5 favor apiece. Which results in spawns. Of course. And here we are. Costs 14 Loki favor. So pick off three houses and you're good to go. Another troll spawns. Oh my goodness, he's already got three trolls. For free. This is gonna be a huge struggle for our man Shadowfax, who's trying so hard to defend this, but the trolls are now getting boosted by Unheriar. This isn't supposed to happen, right? <laughs> uh, those minor gods don't go together. Well, Loki don't care. He spawns another troll. You gotta be troll. Holy shit! He's got seven trolls! What is happening? Jesus Christ! Shadowfax. He's gonna get demolished by this. There's no way he can hold that. More Mayfield spawns! Oh my god! Soup absolutely destroying him! Oh my god! He's out of the tour. Soup advancing to the round of eight, destroying Shadowfax's chances of making it. He's uh, Shadowfax is out of the tournament. Soup is a literal god. He just made this happen. Keeping the Hershey's alive for long enough and suddenly killing all the units and popping off with the spawns like crazy. Beautiful play. It's that last engagement that took it all. There's no way to come back against such a Mifian hit spawn heavy army. It can't be done. It can't be done. Not from that point. We want to thank our MetaPlace website subscribers. Your contribution helps us keep the project sustainable. As we reach higher subscription goals, you are helping us cover more and more behind-the-scenes costs, such as video editing. Check out our subscription page using the link in the description, and remember to collect your perks. We will see you the next time.